Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 8 and Third Reich events installed. Okay. I think my intelligence is getting a little better up here. I think they just have the one garrison division up there. At least that's my current assessment. Okay, cargo hold advance. And that is... Air systems? Where is that? Oh, here. Okay. We're going to stop that. No point in pushing too far forward with that. Rockets. I just don't know if I want to reduce the air speed and the range. That's the main reason I haven't done these. Improve armored cars. And combined arms coordination has advanced. We'll let that continue. these guys I'm thinking and no they don't have that range I wasn't sure whether they would but we do have this range so I think we're gonna drop in here let's hope I'm not way out of line Okay, we secured this, and it looks like they just have a garrison division. Switzerland. Yes, you may have the energy. So, we are getting Iceland. We're going to have to break it. Commerce defense. I'm gonna let that one go. We'll get more and more. Okay, we've got Reykjavik now. Use this one to go up over there. Okay, on board the airplanes. Okay, well, we can get those guys on. Now we're going to fly you guys all the way over to here and. Let's improve my pride. By the time it's done, it'll probably be too late, but I also think I've got a bunch of other guys that we can we'll go put at the top before we get it done, but might as well It'd be useful. I just don't want to do a naval invasion here with all the air and naval there. That really mess me up. But I think I can parachute in there. See. Okay, so surprised they haven't run off to some other um, allied port there. I know we've taken away their 
their last, you know, Belgian port, but you could go to some American or somebody's port. Wait, cruiser crew training. Okay. That's what we got in there for. This is South Africans there. Okay. Yeah. Between the land, between the air and the ground forces. Okay, and we also need to do this. Air supply. We do have supplies going to the Pharaoh Stone. Yes, so I should be able to supply them once they get organized up a little bit better. Okay, those air support prototypes have advanced. Two engine fighters, okay. Oh good, Portugal wants to give us access rights, we'll accept that, because we're going down that path. Yes, you may have energy, even though it's debt. I don't need to conquer everywhere. I know some of you guys would sort of like that, just to see. Yeah, whatever. Just to see it happen, but I'd rather have Portugal with its colonies. Okay, um, as a member of the Axis, whether actively in the war or not, I don't know. Okay, order place. Choose place the order. Hungary. Okay, well, you can have fighters, sure. 18th Artillery Division. The first um, purely artillery division, which was intended to be an independent and movable powerful force, was to be created with uh, Aufstellung Behels. Okay, I probably only butchered that greatly, but cool. September of Okay, you can read through all that. Uh, I just did. Germany did have, um, obviously, primarily serving on the Eastern Front. Um, I believe more than just the one. This is the 18th Artillery Division. Um, basically, divisions um, that were uh, exclusive, well, 
as they say here, uh, you know, there's a, uh, um, which assault gun battalion did, assault guns sort of kind of were artillery in the early stages, but more and more became a um, tank destroyer type unit. And it did have a, a rifle battalion. And as they're described in there, used as a, um, you know, blocking force for, you know, to stabilize the front when the enemies were breaking through. My also understanding of the unit or of similar units at the time was a um, sort of a core asset in which, um, how do I put this? If you were to assign an extra uh, artillery company or battalion to a, um, a division in and of itself, it's not always that easy to get that um, force back, you know, if it's actually assigned to the division, easy and quickly to get that unit out. I know, you know, divisional commanders have a lot of power, and just because they get some orders doesn't necessarily mean that things always happen. You might sort of presume that, and it mostly does, but um, in and amongst um, combat, there's... Um, a lot of chaos and oh we need these now we can't give these up kind of situations where if you have for administrative purposes a division so you have you know paymasters you have supply um, because that's a lot of what you know you need people to supplying artillery rounds getting you know doing all the stuff you know from every element from the factory to the to the gun barrel itself you've got to maintain the supply so you have you create these artillery divisions and then like I say you can assign them to the, a corps or to an army and then instead of um, adding a company or a battalion of artillery to a divisions you know internal normal um, order of battle you're just temporarily assigning um, use of those weapons to a particular division and often divisions are fighting close enough the guns themselves may not actually move especially if you're those are the 150 millimeter um, hummels that you're seeing there but they often had the um, 150 millimeter towed artillery the 170 which was quite common in the German army but maybe not so common on you know the standard infantry division level 170 millimeter artillery which was rather effective that it wouldn't necessarily change place, you know, it, its position. It would just um, start taking tasking from a from a different, you know, nearby division as corps commanders felt that they needed to support one division or another. So it could be fluid retasking, um, and obviously the you know internal professional forward observers would hop in their Kuba wagons or whatever and drive um, to the other division or just the other divisions forward observers would start sending in fire missions now they also of course sh shifted position moved considerable distance as well too so it was a um, from my reading also it was a um, very useful formation in that way so that it would be broken up as needed and as the flow of the battle so it and again you know maybe i'm overstating that you get orders to like remove a unit out of the order of battle that they wouldn't follow yeah they would follow but how many days weeks getting this stuff disentangled to then assign it to the order of battle of another division that's um difficult where if you have it within its own division that you're just hey this general or this unit gets you support them until we tell you to support somebody else and you're never assigned to them as a a unit under uh, uh, in part of the the order of battle you're just simply supporting them in that way and that was done a lot as well and so um yes we will take it, it looks like a free unit so we'll take it i don't know if that's a good idea now if it's based on some of the earlier stuff that we've um, paid for uh, um, up here you know what some of the various negatives that we're fa facing 
and so we've already paid for it, then yes, it's a very good idea. Danish People's Defense. Okay, the Danish People's Defense was a minor grouping of Danish Kalberg Corps form with the civilians. In. Now this photo is of the um, Danish SS unit, but okay. Probably one of the few photos that you can find. A nice flat after all of that. So, why not? Supplies for Athens. Go ahead, because we ship a lot out from there. Expand our industry, sure. Okay, the 266th Infantry Division. Okay, that looks good. We're going to use those for garrison and freeze up other divisions for more offensive operations like they did historically okay and eight SS curbs division yes we will mm. that that one okay well we'll take it I hope that Maybe we'll have to reshift it around again, but okay. It's not right in the middle of... Okay, so we're removing these. Basically, we stall. Then that may disappear. I'm guessing it reappears up here. Yes. Okay, it's improved. That's for sure. Um, pretty sure this is a black ice event, but... Um, what the hell? Yeah. Because if you noticed, I just... Because I was looking at it. Light vehicle transport. Reformed with... Horse transport. I could see that maybe that there's a historical reason for that, but why give it a motorized infantry battalion then? A regiment, actually, but yeah. Why give it that if you're going to downgrade it to horse transport? So hopefully that other unit will stay there. And I think I'm going to cheat a little bit and just sort of before it maybe fully goes away. that to it there so it won't go away anymore you can cheat for all these events just if you guys don't already know that and normally I don't do that and once I can reincorporate I'll probably just delete this unit um, since we are since it's already motorized there the only downside with this is that it will require the use of fuel but it's probably a better fighting unit, having the Ski Jaeger. Not sure, but okay, for the adverse conditions, that is. Division Goering, whatever. Okay, the Hermann Goering Division, yes, we'll keep him happy. Put that in there. And... Yeah, okay, good. That's going to be improved. Good base, quickest way. We're going to pick up at least the Africa Corps units there. Don't we have supply coming in yet? Okay, get payment. Supplies for Crete, not at this time. And the 709th Infantry Division, yes, we'll take that. 
expand the air bases. No need at this time because I don't think we're, we'll be expanding in areas in which would be useful. Okay, well, let's see. We're getting a lot of production going here. Lot of improved landing craft there. Let's just do two. Set two. And well, I could have done them first, but four motor torpedo boats. We're gonna send these guys back over to Scrappa Flow. Scrappa Flow, I guess. Make sure they're not eating the supplies. Then. Okay, we won. Cool. Fighter bomber prototypes. Okay. We'll go with that. Troops up there. Okay, good. Now we'll be getting supplies, hopefully. Before, it looks like it's not going to be too difficult to take. So we're doing airborne invasion. And we didn't, wasn't very difficult at all. Yeah, well, we'll do that in a minute. Okay, um, one of the, I think maybe the last check, uh, clicking the wrong spot. I can't go. Our DVR is full. We're in negotiations. Okay. Back. Sorry. Clicking the wrong spot here. Um, this may be one of the last. Uh, there may be a few more. Um, check events. Currently, um, I found this. I thought this was very fascinating. I really did. Um, I know you may not always find what I everything I find fascinating. Um, this is happening in um, Prague. I this was like a um, commemorative um, or magazine article about this. Um, and then Manzenda? I don't know. ML? I don't know how you put, say it. Sorry, George and everyone else. From the Czech Republic, um, your language eludes me. Um, a youth sports day in Bohemia and Moravia. Uh, as you can see from the photos, um, I mean, this is obviously a close up of sort of these guys here parade marching. But you can see here, and they're going all the way up the street, and all these people are out watching this. Now, this is in Prague. This is in um, 
1943 in October. I presume it would, you were happening at more or less the right time here. Um, that so you picture the not what we're doing in, in here. You know, you've conquered the Soviet Union, conquered Britain, and ruling Africa. And we could see this, but but here in 43, you have. Um, You have definitely German propaganda on the radio and other places putting out that they're doing pretty well. Um, they're acknowledging some problems, I'm sure. I, you know, don't listen to a lot of it because um, just, you know, I don't understand it. I catch a word or two if I just listen to German. I don't understand the <clears throat> what they're saying. But you also will have British, and it will reach into, um, into um, Czechoslovakia, the BBC and other British um, radio propaganda going on that is, you know, shading the what's going on in the Allies' viewpoint, but more or less true. So they've got to be aware that things in 43, it's not 44, so it's not everything's falling apart, but um, the battle of, if I have the dates right, the battle of Stalingrad is going on. Um, in October, they haven't been surrounded yet, because I think that happens a bit later. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I'm not good on on dates. I'm more good. I I know history as a as a series of causes and effects more than exact dates. But you will have had um, pretty sure the invasion of Sicily and don't think that Italy has dropped out of the war yet, but things aren't going well in the Mediterranean. It's 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 pretty apparent that they're not going well. Obviously, America is, is in this war heavily. Um, they're bombing, including bombing in um, Prague. Uh, I haven't put that in. I've collected some material that the Germans um, propaganda that they were using... Um, playing up the allies were bombing the Czechs you know that they were at war with the Czechs as well as um, the Germans so that you know we're all in this together kind of stuff and there's some st stuff that I can make up to, to sort of show what they were doing there so that I think to the average Czech who wasn't inherently either pro-fascist, pro-national socialist, or pro-German, that there was hope that Germany could be defeated. It wasn't anything like this. It was, you know, where in, say, 41, throughout 41, Germany looked so ascendant that it's going to win everything. Sure, there's battles in North Africa, and in 41, before or even after the start of the invasion of the Soviet Union, they're just gobbling up territory. Sure, there's bombings, but you have the Luftwaffe heavily confronting um, the RAF. And, you know, so uh, that Germany looks like it's going to win. By 43, things, I think, have got to somehow change. But you have... There's got to be thousands of people lining this road for this. Now, I don't know. Did they shut down the factories and order all the factory employees out um, that day or what? I don't quite know what um, is behind all of this. H who exactly? And now you, the fl you can always get 50 or 100 people to carry a bunch of flags. And the Nazis like having doing that in which that instead of one flag sort of representing a group of 50 or 100 people it just 100 people carrying flags they just like doing that so that was a, a standard sort of nazi thing so you can always get that but to have all these people out there lining the the streets to have hundreds of people in the parade itself and these are all these aren't the people in this parade these are all um czech youths of one sort or another um, and I say that in that these, they're all members, well, trying to be careful here. Um, 
as you can say, we we need to further um, bringing into line of the um, uh, Bohemian Moravian people here. And there was this significant German plan to bring the Czech people into line um, with with the German thinking. We've already talked about how um, the Nazis very much were standardizing German across all of Germany instead of the pockets of different little different languages. I'm talking here of, of you know different varieties of German. They German was widely spoken um, in the Czech in Czechoslovakia. Um, at least one thing that I've read. Um, if you didn't want to, you know, before the German invasion, if you didn't want to sound sort of lower class, you sort of spoke German in in Prague. If you're sort of of the elites, because a lot of the elites of the Austro-Hungarian Empire spoke German, so it was sort of a status thing, sort of like. Um, I've read it in the more of the 18th century, the status thing for all the elites in the Austro, in the Austrian Empire at that time, it wasn't really Austro-Hungarian so much, but in the Austrian Empire, the elites, they all spoke French, where like in the Prussian elites, they all spoke German as a um, sort of daily language to separate themselves out. And they, so my understanding uh, from my reading is, is in the Austrian Empire, the the German elites tried to speak French to each other and only spoke German to their servants kind of thing is sort of that. So that there was a widespread use of German before Germany took over. Germany did have a program to try to spread the German culture and basically to one degree or another um, obliterate the Czech culture and just bring it all into line with Germany. And this is part of this thing. So who exactly are these um, youths? Are these all um, members of various National Socialist type groups that we've seen earlier here? Or um, are these just general youths that are coming out for the sports day for a sports event that they want to be involved with that just happens to be sponsored by the National Socialist. I don't know. See, I, you, you can see the line that could be... Because if you just want to go out and have a sports day, you don't necessarily have to agree with their political um, viewpoints, but it does show, at least to a degree, they weren't boycotting it. You know, or maybe they were, and this is just how many people that supported the Nazis. I'm not really sure on that. Um, but I was fascinated by this, and you can see some more here. Um, that is Doctor. Um, uh, what is it? Frankitz, Frank's Turner. Here, um, he, uh, of the German youth group, the flag or, or youth group of the flag, or what is it? Vidka, whatever is the National Socialist Movement here. Um, is speaking um, and pictured below here um, Prime Minister um, which would be that guy uh, Karjik, Karjik, sorry and Obersturm van Fuhrer um, Fetcher and Minister Moravec which is that guy right there sort of the pudgy face I'm not sure right? I know I have an event covering him I don't know if it's already fired this way or just hasn't fired and should have fired because of the short thing. So this was, um, obviously at this day, the Prime Minister shows up, one of the um, higher ranking SS guys shows up, the, the basically the equivalent of the head of the um, Hitler Youth in Czechoslovakia shows up. Um, they're all part of the... Um, the Vadki, Vadka, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm butchering this. It's sort of the flag group, that the, the National Socialist group you see here. A bunch of girls in um, show up in traditional costumes. Um, guys out in their shorts doing, um, you know, running out onto the field. You can see the stands are pretty, pretty well full. 
we're going to watch the events and so here's the, the stadium here it's pretty large and you can see I, I've had to reduce these things down to fit here but it's going all the way around on all sides and the, the stadium is just full of spectators as you can see here this is the main sort of reviewing stand that we were seeing earlier um, out there sort of doing the Nazi thing of moving around in geometric patterns and in unison mostly we see these surviving today in places like communist China and North Korea but um, the Nazis very much like these kinds of pattern demonstrations masses as opposed to just getting out and doing the sport as it were but you can see them all out there these are all pictures from the day of the event the guys out there doing this mass coordination exercises how many people um, that's what that is okay and here's some of the now here's the sports you know high you know high jumps and uh, no we're not as high jumps it's um hurdles long um you know long distance running around the tracks discus kind of throwings long jumps so that's you know now that's normal youth activity sports and i can see the likelihood of non-national socialist Czechs just wanting to participate in that as a youth and quite possibly them and the audience getting a good chunk of it that they don't agree with the, the politics behind people holding the event or not i'm not see i'm not sure about that and i don't see and maybe they were happening i just don't have access to the magazines and other things that these things are going on in um, occupied Western European countries. Obviously, they weren't. I know they weren't going on in occupied Ukraine and other places like that. But big sports days, I've yet to see in for you know the Netherlands, Belgium, France holding much of these kinds of things. So this is sort of what is so interesting to me. And then here's the girls out doing similar sorts of things. Um, shot puts high jump over that just resting so that they were also involved you can see the different um logos on the the sports shirts whether that's different city groups or different political groups not quite sure different social clubs and then obviously um awarding the prizes now here for awarding the prizes they're giving you know the nazi salute um, especially once you get up on that stage, whether you agree with it or not, I'm sure you're under a lot of pressure to just do it then. Now, so were these, was this event participants all members of the flag or the youth elements of the flag, or were they forced to be such? I don't know, um, but they're at least going along to get along minimum at this. So I, I find this just, as you can tell, very fascinating. So that so that's going on in um, mid to late 43 in Prague in World War II when, at least looking back on it, we know the Allies are going to win and we know that um, at that point they had to know that Italy wasn't doing well at a minimum and that US the US was into this in the war and going very strong so I just find these things interesting and I use Third Reich events to cover some of that in in a way to show you what it was like because it to me it's fascinating to see what it what it was like then because I've watched a lot of wartime made movies with you know that are have various propaganda viewpoints and then a lot of post-war stuff but it's interesting to see the stuff from the period and how they were dealing with it yeah we're gonna let both of those go no, we're doing okay battle commander that would be nice if we can have one Do 
come onto the map or not. I just know there's a 50-50 chance, but don't know. No, it doesn't look like we did. Okay. Okay, well. Not that we can deploy these units. Yes, you can. Okay, another um, TRE event um, covering the NSKK um, Regiment 1 der Luftwaffe. Um, I've had a lot of trouble finding NSKK identifiable photos. Um, mostly searching the web, but also all my books that I have. So I can scan in the, the photos. Found a lot of cuff titles, as you can see here. So they vary slightly um, for it. So um, I did like the idea of giving regional um, movement bonuses. The, these are mainly um, formed. Now you can see this should have happened a while ago. Formed in the winter, between winter. So this is because I'm playing, again, short bursts. Some of these events are happening way late. Um, so this will give us a few units, Breslau, right here. So just light vehicles, another bunch of light vehicles that you can um, send them over here because we can sort of using this as our various pool to create things. So, you know, if you wanted to motorize a garrison unit or just make a few infantry divisions without transportation and upgrade them, however you want to do it. And part of the reason um, I look at these um, vehicles and events, um, we're going to reduce down, you know, which allows us to build more. Um, is not all of these events are costing money is they were confiscating a lot of motor vehicles from various locations okay looks like some of our factories have come online so that trucks uh, from occupied territories were rounded up and used as well as captured military trucks because when um, Various countries are surrendering. They did get lots of... Well, now that we're back up to 1,500 people. Uh, I like Jaeger units. They have pretty good stats. They use limited resources we'll use those SKK units maybe I don't know if we'll remember by that time this happens to me more than once that I have great plans but we have various other um, units that we could do that, but use some of that motor transport. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Use few supplies, relatively speaking. I know a few of you have been asking, why don't I convert everything over to either motor transport or particularly, um, why not for various motor infantry divisions um even armored divisions like truck transport converting them over to half track then half track are better they are better but they eat lots of fuel so you really need to um watch that both on the 
supposed to be going there. Um, both in the sense of getting stuck out in the middle of the Soviet Union without fuel, and getting enough fuel to them, plus the just general are you producing enough fuel uh, equation. So um, I read somewhere of one of the, I think, World War Wednesdays or one of the battles, um, Johann motorized all of his German um, forces or something and then completely ran out of fuel trying to um, manufacture them. Obviously, as you know, the fuel situation or lack thereof directly in Hearts of Iron 4 is giving people lots of heartburn, but I don't know how that'll work out in the end. I really don't know how that'll work out in the end. You know, some people are wedded to the idea, apparently, but we will see amphibious invasion tactics. Okay, we're going to let these go. It's good that we're... Oh, no, that's over here. Um, but we'll let it go. Oh, no, 46, that's way too far forward. So, no, we won't let that go. I think it was... The commando training. An engine armament research. We'll prove carrier. these but we'll give them light transports because I don't know that we're gonna have enough extra ones okay well this episode has gotten probably longer than we should no we're not going to give you Well, maybe we should, but I don't know. Never mind. Okay. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. I do appreciate it. Please post comments. Love talking to you, talking with you, not just to you. That's very good. See you next time.